Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Biology Science Practice 2. It's on using mathematics appropriately. Remember, in AP Biology, you not only have to know the content that is biology, you have to know how to apply that. And so if you want to do well on the AP Bio test in the spring, you really have to know how to use mathematics and apply it. Um, but there's a bigger reason why. Uh, number one is that everything is built on, on uh, mathematics. In other words, if we look at biology, that's just going to be the upper level of how life works. But if you dig into biology, you quickly find biochemistry underneath that is chemistry, underneath that is physics, and finally we have mathematics. And so all sciences at their core root have mathematics. And in biology, it's very crucial because we are having the explosion of this new field in biology called mathematical biology. It's driven by a number of things. One of those is genomics. We're sequencing so much DNA right now and it's getting cheaper and cheaper. So this right here shows the exponential growth in genes being submitted to the gene bank. This is the cost it takes to sequence one million nucleotides, which is approaching zero, you can see here, zero dollars. And then this is the cost to sequence a human genome, which started in the millions, but is, is getting cheaper and cheaper every day. So in the future, you'll probably be able to have your own genome sequenced, even in a biology class. We also uh, had the creation of what's called chaos theory and so we're using mathematics and computers to predict life like this is a computer simulation of what a fern may be. This is a simple mathematical uh, pattern called the rule of 30 that was created by Stephen Wolfram but it can predict even the patterns on this cone snail here. And so mathematics can predict life. We're also seeing an explosion in computing power. This is Moore's law, the idea that every Two years, the number of transistors on a processor is going, microprocessor is going to double. That means that our computers get faster and faster and cheaper and cheaper over time. And then finally, we have the um, creation of laboratory experiments in silico. What does that mean? Well, if I said I'm doing some lab uh, work in vitro, that means I'm growing things in a test tube or in a petri dish. If I do it in vivo, that means in a living uh, organism, in this case in a lab rat. But in silico means that I'm simulating life in a computer. In this case, we're simulating um, dendrite growth. And so what are some advantages of that? You can crunch a huge amount of numbers. And also, you don't have those ethical concerns that you would have dealing with a mouse. And so, or a rat. Um, and so math is very important. And um, in the new AP curriculum, there are four pretty big, uh, pretty important equations that you should be familiar with in each of the four different big ideas. And so I went through and chose uh, one formula for each of these. In evolution, I went with Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. You should be able to apply that. Uh, figure out what the alleles are uh, based in a population just based on making some measurements. I'll put some links here to videos I've made, so if you don't understand Hardy-Weinberg, um, you could go watch that. In free energy, we should really have an understanding of solute potential, which leads to water potential. In this case, it's caused by the negative ionization constant times molar concentration times pressure constant times temperature. At information, when we're looking at genetic data, in this case, if we're looking at the results of a cross, we could have our predicted or our expected results, and then we can compare that to our observed results using the chi-squared analysis. Again, I'll put a link here if you're confused by that. And even um, predicting population growth. Here we have exponential and then logistic growth, but there are formulas that predict how that change is going to occur and how it's eventually going to approach K or a carrying capacity. And so there's a formula sheet, remember, that goes along with the AP test, but you want to be familiar with it and don't just hope that it's going to get you through the test. You also want to have a calculator that you can use. And so I came up with three questions uh, that are tied to the three understandings you ha should have in the area of mathematics. And so the first thing they want you to be able to do is justify the selection of a mathematical routine. And so I've given you a sample problem here. You could pause the video right now, read through it, and then try to answer the question. Or you could just have me do it. And so what we're looking at is coloration in the peppered moth. Remember that's famous in evolution because it showed evolution. It showed the moths turning from a light color to a dark color with the Industrial Revolution and a change in coloration on the trees. And so coloration in peppered moths is caused by a single allele. The allele for dark-bodied moths is big D and it's dominant. So what they're asking in this question is what's the appro approximate frequency of the light allele in 1840 and 1900? So they're looking for D. In this case that would be Q. Okay, how do you solve that? Well, if you look right here, here's where the evolution took place when we get a change in the population. It's important that you always read the axes on a graph. They're giving us the percent population of the dark-bodied moth. 
And so remember the dark, since it's dominant, doesn't tell us much. We're going to want to get to the percent of light colored moths. And so they're looking right here in 1840 and then in 1900. Uh, well, the math is a little bit easier up here. I could do it in my head. So in 1900, we had 51% of the moths being dark. That means 49% of the moths were going to be light. So that's going to be my Q squared value. If I take the square root of that, I'm going to get a Q of 0.7. And so the right answer in 1900 would be around 0.7. Um, you'll be able to use your calculator on the test, and then you're going to grid in those answers. But I couldn't have gotten there if I didn't know, okay, we're looking at allele frequency, let's use Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Okay, in this question they're asking us to calculate the mean rate of population growth between 80 and 176 minutes. And so this is bacterial growth. You can see that the density went from zero almost towards one. Um, and so if you're ever asked to do a growth rate, that's going to simply be the slope of that line. And slope is very important, uh, especially if we're looking at our data. And so from 80 to 176 minutes, how do I calculate slope? Well, that's going to be the rise over the run. So I would draw in a little triangle, calculate the rise. In this case, it's going to be about 0.72 change in population density. My time or my run is going to be around 96 minutes. And so if I divide my rise by the run, I'm going to get 0.0075 density increase per minute. Um, and so what am I doing here? I'm applying a mathematical routine. In this case, it's slope. But you're also going to have to be able to apply any kind of an equation or any kind of a um, mathematical algorithm that you're going to find on that sheet. In this case, it's slope, but it might be standard error. Um, it might be mean or range. And so you really want to be comfortable uh, using your calculator and using the formula sheet. If you look at the last one, they want you to be able to estimate quantities that describe natural phenomena. And so this is a question I came up with. Predict the following masses of the, the final masses of the following dialysis tube. So we've got different concentrations, sucrose concentrations, inside this um, dialysis tubing. They've given you the mass of each of those. And then we're going to put it in a concentration of 0.4 molar sucrose. And they want you to predict the mass at the end. Well, the easiest one would be to start with this one, 0.4 and 0.4. There's, there's going to be movement of water back and forth through osmosis, but our net change, this should be around 30.84. If you look at the next one, we're putting more concentrated in less concentrated. In other words, we're putting hypertonic inside hypotonic. And so what's going to happen there? Well, we're going to get a, a, a movement of water into the dialysis tubing. So I would predict that this one is going to go up uh, a number, let's say, 30. This one is going to go down, and this one is going to go down even more. Because if we've got distilled water inside here, we put it inside 0.4, then the water is going to be flowing out. Why is that important? Well, that's how cells work, remember. And why isn't the sucrose moving? It's too big for the dialysis tube. Let's try another estimation. This is the actual osmosis lab that a lot of people do. So what we did is took potato cores, put them in different concentrations of sucrose solution, and then we measured their percent mass change. And so sometimes those potatoes got bigger, sometimes they got smaller, but they're asking us to estimate the concentration of the potatoes. Well, if, if you put a potato has the same concentration of uh, the surroundings, there's going to be isotonic. There's not going to be any change. So I could look at a 0% change in mass, and that's going to be around, I don't know, 0.28, something like that, molar sucrose. That's going to be my guess for the concentration of potatoes, at least in our lab. And so again, uh, applying mathematics is incredibly important. A good place to start might be with that um, formula sheet for AP Biology and then just working through each of them. Um, why is it important? Well, even Darwin, long time ago, before we had computers and before we had genomics, said two things in relation to math. Number one, every new body of discovery is mathematical in form. In other words, it's at that root because there's no other guidance that we have. And he also said, mathematics seems to endow one with something like a new sense. Um, and so if you want to have this extra sense that Darwin's talking about, you better learn your mathematics, and I hope that was helpful.